Hi guys, it's Matt from Maxon here, and in this little tutorial, we are going to be creating a mirrored disco ball and then using caustics to create the reflections in a realistic fashion. Okay, so let's get cracking. So in Cinema 4D, it's relatively simple to set this scene up. We are going to need a sphere. That is going to be our mirror ball, okay? Um, the number of segments that you get in a sphere is nowhere near enough. Okay, to start with. So if I just turn on Geroud shading and lines, you can see that that's not going to be anywhere near enough segments for what we're after. So I'm going to do, say, nearly three times the amount. Okay, and go for 75. Okay, and there we go. That will give us a nice amount of segments to give us all of those nice, lovely reflections and that nice, lovely caustics. Okay, so selecting the sphere and then making it editable. I'm going to go to my polygon mode and I'm going to select all of the polygons on my sphere. Now I'm going to use a tool called beveling because that will give me a nice sort of ridge to each of the polygons. Okay, so right click and then I shall go to bevel. Okay, I'm going to untick preserve groups. Okay, and oh, it's um, done it for me, so I'm just going to undo. Um, what that does is it stops you beveling everything as a selection and it means that it will individually bevel each of the polygons like so there you go see it's not too bad but you can see on the top it goes a little bit crazy and you know you can turn it inside out because of the space that there is available for those polygons on the top to you know expand so i'm just going to do it a little bit okay and that will give us some nice little grooves in between that separates those faces to act as a mirror ball. Now we need to put the mirror ball texture on. So create yourself a new texture. Okay, and this is going to be highly reflective. So we don't need any color, untick, and we don't need any reflectance, so untick that. Uh, sorry, we do need reflectance, so leave that on. And then we're going to add, we're just gonna add a legacy reflection because that gives us 100% reflection in everything that we need and I'm just going to just drag and drop that to the sphere and there we go we have a highly reflective glitter ball already now we need it things to reflect and this is where the lights come in so I'm going to create myself a target light and the reason for that is because it means no matter wherever I put the light it will always point at that little disco ball there so changing a couple of the heights of them and just making sure that they are definitely pointing directly at the disco ball. I'm going to create a few. So just using my top down view, F2, I'm going to drag a few more using the command function. And I'm going to make sure that my disco ball is illuminated from all four angles. Excellent. You can change the heights if you want to, to give a little bit of variance with where those little shards of light are going to be created. So just have a little bit of a play with things like that and you'll get your own sort of reflections. Obviously at the moment, if I was to render, there would be very little for it to reflect onto because we have a very reflective ball reflecting absolutely nothing in the space. So what we need is a cube. This cube is going to form a, sort of a disco hall as it were and I'm just going to increase its size quite dramatically. So say 2000 by 2000 by 2000. Oops, 2000, there we go. And I'm going to just make sure that my editor camera plops its way inside, there we go. Okay, I am now inside this cube. With the cube selected, I'm just gonna bring it down in height so you can see that we've got a ceiling. Just means that it gives the me something better to sort of view. And again, if I was to render, we will see very little. At the moment, we just see a disco ball not being very reflective at all, um, at least not reflecting the lights that are pointing at it. This is because we need to enable caustics. So we need to enable caustics in two different areas. We need to enable it on the lights. And caustics is that correct way that light bounces or changes through things. So we are going to be using surface caustics. So with all four lights selected, so I don't have to do this more than once, I'm going to select caustics. 
Okay, now we have access to the surface caustics. Volume caustics is something that I shall probably go through another time. But for this instance, we are going to use surface caustics. So I'm going to put a tick in the box that allows surface caustics. Now, you also need to enable it under the render settings. So go into the render settings, go into the effect. We need to add caustics, okay? And you can see that we've already got a tick in the box that says it will use surface caustics. This means that light will come out of these lights it will bounce on my extremely reflective material here and it will create those lovely little sparks of light all over the walls and floor and ceilings that you would expect to see from a standard glitter ball. So now if I press render, there we go, there we have it. We've got our glitter ball, okay, and it's sending out these shards of light everywhere. Now, depending on whether or not you're satisfied with that, um, you may want to increase its energy strength. At the moment, it doesn't seem to be very bright at all. So if I change that to 500% and then render, there we go. You can see the scene is much more illuminated and these shards of light are much brighter than they were before. Now, what well, disco ball stays still, so we just need to do a little animation of this. And I'm gonna do that rotating really quite simply. So putting a keyframe, in my H rotation at zero frames. I'm gonna make sure that my animation gets to 90 and I'm just gonna increase that to 30. You can see that that spins in the direction that I want it to go in. And then put a keyframe in there. If I go back to the beginning and press play, it speeds up and slows down. That's because of Cinema 4D's ease in and ease out function. If I just quickly select that keyframe at the beginning, I can change its interpolation and I can change it from spline to linear. And that means that this ball will now stay at constant speed, rotating all the way through from beginning to end. Okay, awesome. So what I'm gonna do, in fact, what I might do is just change that value from 30 degrees to 45, okay? And then ensure that that's re-keyframed. And that should mean that this loops quite nicely. Okay, cool. So now the thing to do is to render. So let's do a quick preview render. Okay, I'm gonna just do a make preview. I'm gonna make that a larger size so that when it renders you can see it. And then I will speed this up so you can see it when it's done. Okay, let's press play and have a look. There we go, marvelous. We have our lovely little rotating disco ball there. Okay, working its way around, excellent. Using wonderful surface caustics to create the reflections working their way around the room. Okay, that was another quick tutorial on how to create a disco ball and use caustics. I hope it was useful for you and I will catch you next time.